um, when I was shuffling the cards for you, I saw this image. Um, so there's this guy. He's um, he's holding a watering hose and he's watering like he's hosing down the 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 grass. Okay, and uh, it's weird because um, you know the watering hose there they have coils, right? And for whatever reason, he doesn't really pull out the entire, like he doesn't unroll the entire coil so that he has more leeway, so that he has more range. He only like pulled out, I would say, what, two meters? So he's, his, his range of distance is very limited. So he's only watering the grass that is immediately surround, uh, around him within that two meter radius. Um, so I, I see him, I, I see him doing the same things over and over and over again, watering just around within that, that, that range. And what I'm getting from this image is once again, you know, broaden your horizons a little bit. Um, the need to kind of not be so, I want to say tunnel vision and focusing on the small things rather than seeing the whole picture. And there's definitely a need here to kind of like learn to troubleshoot and problem solve and especially uh, learn to kind of step out of our comfort zone a little bit. And that, that's what I'm, I'm feeling here. So it's like you're tending to a certain thing over and over and over again. And I feel it's almost like doing it out of that sense of repetition. It's like it's been done in the past, so I'm going to do it again. Um, there needs to be a little bit more risk taking and, you know, as well, getting creative and using the tools at your disposal and using the tools that are all around you so that you can, you know, creatively problem solve or you can, you know, extend outside of your comfort zone okay so enough about that um what is coming through with this spread here is uh there are some really really good energies but i definitely see you being very stubborn about allowing these uh, new opportunities to come in so let me talk about your energy and what's coming through for you you show up here as the king of cups in the reverse King of Cups in the reverse. This is somebody who, when in the upright, is very much in control of their emotions, okay? And it's almost like you know when to back off. You know what really uh, irks you. You know what you like. You know what you don't like. And you try to avoid people that aggravate you. When it's in the reverse position, it could be, you know, attention-seeking. It could be... Um, getting involved in situations that you know is not good for you. It could be resorting to behaviors that you know are not healthy. And um, honestly, as, an, as a water sign, when this card comes out, this is what I usually think of like the Scorpio energy. This can be dealing with a situation where you are not completely confident about your skills, about your capabilities, about your body image, about the way you look, about the way you feel. You're, you're, you feel a little bit out of your element or you feel a little bit like unsure. Okay, so there's a little bit of a confidence dip that's coming into the picture, especially at the beginning of the week. And what I feel happening here is um, the way to get out of this situation and the way to kind of resolve these insecurities is you have to kind of, um, whenever I see this card, the funny thing is, um, you see the, the claws on that lion? It's almost like he's tiptoeing in. It's like he's sneaky or he's stealthy. And I feel like the, the way out of this is to honestly talk about it, okay? Don't tiptoe and don't beat around the bush. Don't tiptoe around a subject. You really need to kind of like, you know, kick the doors in and just make the presence, make your presence be known or make the situation, like bring it to light. Because whoever you're dealing with, they're very sympathetic, they're very empathetic, and they're going to 
tell you it's going to be okay. They're going to reassure you. They're going to soothe away all of your insecurities. They're going to soothe the situation. They're going to make it better. So there's no need to kind of like slither in and, you know, um, wonder about the situation. Just put it all out there and see what happens because you're dealing with someone who's seen it all. Okay. So this is, I, I, in the traditional Rider Waite deck, it's some it's an angel with a, a a lion. So this is somebody that you know can. There's a great degree of trust in this card. Two people really trusting one another, and they know that whatever they reveal, the other person is not going to use that as ammunition. You know, in the next argument, in the next fight, they're not going to use it against you, and and you likewise are not going to use their deepest, darkest secrets or their fears or their insecurities against them. So there's a great degree of trust and. You know, a lot of people say Scorpios are very, very secretive. And um, I feel to a certain extent, everyone is very, very secretive about the things that make them feel insecure. We don't go around uh, revealing what makes us, you know, insecure or what makes us feel less than. It's a sore spot for many of us. But I'm feeling it is especially so for you Scorpios. And as a result of it, I feel almost like you trust somebody enough to reveal all of these things about yourself and they've never used it against you. And so the advice here is definitely, you know, put it all out there, get it out in the open. It's like that, um, that bandaid, don't rip it off slowly, rip it off fast and do it once and do it right. And you know, you never have to worry about it. Okay, so you have somebody in your life that you can definitely trust with all of these problems. So if you're having a little bit of an identity crisis, if you're having a self-confidence uh, dip, you definitely can communicate with them. And uh, I feel like it can work out and they can, um, they, can, they can make the situation a lot better for you. They're presenting you with some information that you might not even have uh, thought about. We have some new work that's coming into the picture. And I also see travel and movement associated with this new job. So what I have here is the Ace of Coins. This is the beginning of something that you can definitely build upon, okay? Um, many of you have recently started a new job. Many of you as well have recently relocated. Two of Wands. This is movement, travel, uh, change in direction. And I, f I feel like, you know, there were definitely some divine protection here working behind the scenes in order to facilitate this process for you. So you definitely, you have some really positive things, but I definitely see like a lot of uncertainty coming through from your end. And I feel like it is your own personal hang up because the surrounding energies, everything looks really good. Okay. New work, new income generating opportunities, new opportunities for travel. You have somebody that you really trust. And we have the magician, which is you manifesting, trying to create that abundance in your life, connecting with people, being the life of the party, being sought after, being invited out to, you know, um, enjoy the festivities. Okay, this is a person that is really in their element. And as the magician, he embodies the energies of all the elements. So he has mastery over everything. And so I feel like it might be, you know, towards the mid, the middle or the end of the week where you're going to start to feel this energy full force, where you're going to be able to overcome the insecurities, where you're going to be able to feel like you're in your element. And we also have as well, um, what I'm seeing is, it feels to me like there's a relationship here from the past uh, where one person is investing a lot of their time. It, it feels to me like it could have been a long distance relationship because the two of wands is a relationship card, but there's only one picture, one person in the picture. And there might have been like a long distance relationship. And I feel like it wasn't, it, it wasn't emotionally fulfilling for many of you. You have found ways to try to rectify the situation. You have, you know, made sacrifices in order to keep this person in your life. The other person as well could have encountered like a, a new position, a new job. They might have moved away and then you're making plans to move to where they are. So I feel like the two of you, if you're in a relationship, it has been long distance or, you know, there's a coming together. 
okay? So the two of you are making contingency plans to be in the same location at the same time, and both of you are going to be able to achieve that. So if there is a, a will for the two of you to, to work together, to want to make this relationship work, but keep in mind, both people have to be on board. Otherwise, it's not going to work. But I feel like there is a... Um, there's a fear here, you know, if I relocate, are you going to relocate? Are we on the same boat? Are we on the same team? Are we working towards the same goals? So I, I feel like, you know, I jump, you jump. So you have somebody that you love and they're, they're definitely going to be there for you. And I feel like if you are, for whatever reason, relocating, moving for a new job, it's going to work out really, really well for you, okay? You have a lot of success that is coming through in the professional front where you're going to be highly visible. So I feel like it could be um, a vertical movement, like a promotion, but I feel like there's a lot of public dealings with this job. So um, having to deal with community members, having to advocate for a certain course of action, having to advocate for a certain program, um, having to deal with um, financiers, stakeholders, community members, having to convince people, like you have to really persuade and convince people why they should support what you're doing, okay? And um, I don't see this as you going around doing a sales pitch. It's not like that. I feel like they're, you're, you're trying to um, get the community together or get a bunch of people together with different agendas to support what you're doing. And so you're reaching to people from very different walks of life and you're reaching out to people. Um, I, I'm also feeling like different demographic groups, okay? Like riling people up or getting people to... Uh, invest or you know at least listen to what you're saying it, it's not a sales pitch you're not doing a sales job this is a lot more uh, complex not that sales isn't complex okay so it's, I'm not trying to degrade that but what I feel is this is sort of like working towards a common purpose working for a bigger end goal that involves everybody that involves community commitment that involves buy-in um, I see a lot of like um, you're you're in the public eye, and I feel like that might be why you're not feeling completely comfortable. Um, you guys are actually quite private as well, so I feel like if if the these things are heavily advertised, or if you are you know uh, getting so much visibility, you feel like you are your your personal life might get drag to the forefront and you don't want that you want to preserve your um your personal life you want to keep that personal like you don't want your your children to be exposed to this um you don't want your you know your families to be exposed to this so i i definitely feel a lot of trepidation like yes things are looking really good professionally yes there's a lot of visibility and there's a lot of career success but you are also afraid of the limelight in a, um i feel like there's definitely trepidation from your end about being too heavily publicized or being too um thrown into the public eye too much okay so there's that element um let me see i see a lot of people who are teachers I'm seeing like uh, standing in front of a lecture hall teaching something and uh, you're trying to make it fun and you're trying to make it exciting. And so you're incorporating a lot of anecdotes, a lot of stories from dis different disciplines into what you're teaching so that you can engage your entire audience. So I feel like you're very, very thoughtful and you're very um, aware that you're, so for example, if you're teaching a, a class on chemistry, okay, um, and you're teaching the, the, the it, it's a science class, but it's geared towards non-science majors, you're not going to go in depth into, you know, chemistry. You're going to draw things from different disciplines because you understand that your students don't all have that, um, that background. So I feel like you're very aware of how to sell how to um, uh, retain your audience's attention it requires a little bit more work from your end but you're willing to do it because you want them to learn 
so I, I feel that element about you know um, owning the stage and being very well prepared to be in the public eye. So I'm seeing uh, quite a few teachers. I'm seeing quite a few people uh, having to, you know, do the, the whole meet and greet, which makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, but you're going to be very well received. Um, and you're going to be rubbing elbows with a lot of people. So these meet and greets will actually be very um, enhancing for your professional development as well, okay? So just make sure you accept these invitations and make sure you're able to, um, make sure you're able to, you know, just uh, kind of put yourself out there because it's really helpful for your career. Um, what I do see here is communication and contact coming through from a fire sign. So this is a Sagittarius, an Aries, or a Leo. This is a person that is at a point where they're making great strides in their career and their professional life. And you're going to be getting a lot of good news coming through from this person and a lot of communication, possibly to travel, to partner up, to do some type of a work project. Um, <clears throat> let me see what else. I, I feel like, you know, they, they do have some things in mind that they want to share with you regarding work, regarding career, regarding finances. If this is a, um, I, I feel like it could also be a love interest as well. This is somebody that you want to slow things down with, okay? I, I feel like you should slow things down with them. So Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And I feel that you should slow things down. We have here the Queen of Cups in the reverse. They are very, like, like they're heavy with the pursuit. Like, they're, they're really um, going after you. Like, they're very much all about the, the thrill of the chase and all about the, you know, the newness. And when it's in the reverse position, I feel like they can come on a little bit too strong. Just a little bit too strong. So you want to be careful about that. And especially if it's a new relationship, you know, just take it a little bit slower. There's nothing wrong with this person. It's a king. So, you know, they're pretty much in control of their emotions. And they're not as flaky as like a knight or a page. But I definitely feel you want to slow this down so that you get to know them and you get to know how you feel about them before you can decide what you want to do okay but they're they're definitely very interested in you and there's a lot of communication i feel like they might be rushing for a relationship and you might not be ready so if this is a new person i feel like it might be a new person because we have the judgment card which indicates like new beginnings and um some of you are just at a point where you're not yet ready to jump into a new relationship or some of you are at a point where you're trying to sort out your financial situation. So this relationship might just be a distraction and not yet something that you want to fully invest in. So you might need to tell this person to kind of slow down. Okay. Once again, it's sort of like, don't skirt around the issue. You kind of need to put it out there and let the other person know how you feel. Like if you're not ready, you're just not ready. I'm also feeling as well. Um, there are some regrets there's so there are some issues here. It didn't pan out the exactly the way that you plan. And I feel like it's on the emotional front, a relationship, a connection, and there's like lack of communication. So what I have here is the four of swords waiting around for a situation to get better. And with the four of swords, the swords deals with communication. So this is like a, a resting phase, um, not getting the communication or not being able to communicate in the manner that you hope. And this person has their heart out, okay? So I feel like you bare your soul to another person. When it's in the reverse position, you don't really have a choice. You're going to need to move on. And when you move forward, when you kind of wave goodbye and just move on with your life, you have a new person that's really making their intentions known towards you, okay? This king here, but you still need to slow things down a little bit. Um, so I definitely see like, you know, whatever hiccups or whatever hangups you have, it's going to resolve itself. But I, I do feel hesitancy and, you know, wanting to, some of you might just want to be single. Some of you might just, you know, enjoy the dating process and you might not want to get too close to another person just yet. 
and that's fine. And I feel like if that's the way that it needs to be, you kind of need to explain that to the other person so that they don't fear the worst. Okay. And take whatever time you need to get over this disappointment and this lack of communication because I feel like the other person is still going to be there waiting for you. Okay. So Scorpios, I hope the reading is helpful for you guys.